Hello everyone, you are tuned into Lead Secret Sessions and alongside me is Marmalade Skies. How are you guys doing? Very well. Really good, Very thank good, you. Thanks. This has been a long time coming and yeah. I'm glad you guys are able to finally come on the show. Yeah, we're so I happy. We're excited. Yeah. What's this first song you're going to play? Um, this is Gardens. <laughs> Georgiana. Call the 
sensations on the hammock with her hair as bright as her dreams. She is the one, the one with the beautiful smile, and she feels like a summer's breeze. But a da da da. guys here on lead secret sessions um so we're gonna as i do with every band uh, i'd love to get an introduction of everyone um if we can start over here on the right with asha my name's asha i'm the singer of marmalade skies um marmalade skies is really like my baby so i came to ben who you'll meet in a minute and it kind of went on from there so I'll let Luke introduce himself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Luke. Yeah, I play bass in Marmalade Skies. That's me. <laughs> I'm Ben. I play drums. Um, yeah, I met Asher in an online lecture. I remember you were looking for a drummer. I was like, we'll have a jam. And then eventually we found these two and it got a lot better from there. Definitely. I was a late comer, I think. Yeah. I think both of you had yeah, to be there. Yeah, Did we come at the same time? Yeah, I can have. Yeah, because we had the, we had the uh, like original setup that we did for your recital, and yeah. then it changed in second year. I remember. Yeah, it was like a lot different, so it's had a lot of phases. But yeah. our guitarist. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse the straight. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm a guitar player. Um, not much else. <laughs> We're all a bit shy. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Um, well, you're all from different parts of the UK, and uh, obviously all meeting in Leeds. How do you think your different upbringings uh, has crafted the music you play? Um, I know that like when I was growing up, there wasn't anywhere for me to like gig and show what I'm writing and and perform really, because most of my music I like write with the intention to perform, and I think the boys take that really seriously as well. Like we try to make like everything as dramatic as we can. Um, but like I know where I grew up, I didn't have the chance to perform. So I think, and also not having the space where like young musicians have enough funding and like have a space that they can meet and like be creative. So I think that affected me. I don't know about the other guys. Like I'm like from the Midlands. So mm -hmm. that's like how I feel where I grew up. But I don't know about you guys. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm from a great wee Scottish town called Armadale, um, but it's like slap bang in between Glasgow and Edinburgh, um, and especially in Glasgow, like there's a big jazz scene and um, very vibrant sort of folk Scottish trad folk music scene. Um, so it's just sort of taken from that and coming down here, and me and everybody else and their influences and their takes on things, and being able to add my little bit in, it's just nice and cosy. Eh? So. Um, but I don't know about. Well, I'm from Hull, East Yorkshire, and um, there, like, there's, there is a music scene there. I did some, I, I did a little bit of gigging before I came to Leeds. But I remember being excited to come here for the different like genres of music, because in Hull it's all 
Um, majority is like indie rock and it's not really what I was into at the time. I think when I broke into that scene, I'm, my music taste was changing as well. So I was excited to meet people like these, like these three and it's been good to get to play with them so often, definitely. What about Luke? <laughs> So I'm going to say I'm from Huddersfield because no one knows where Home Firth is. <laughs> so okay. I'll say I'm from Huddersfield, but people might know where the Picture Drum is. So there's a lot of gigs there. But um, yeah, I don't know. I just kind of grew up listening to like rock and Red Hot Chili Peppers and stuff like that. So I was mm. quite a straightforward music taste. And then I've come here and had to do all kinds of stuff. So it's been good. Yeah. Well, I definitely think, I mean, coming to a place like Leeds, like you said, with such a range of you know genres and places to play i think that can definitely develop you as a musician in, in being able to explore different uh genres and i can definitely hear it in your guys work you know with the the jazz influence and the slight rock influence um well talk me through your writing process how how does that work i know actually you said about not being able to to show other people as has, has your writing changed now that you're in leeds and oh massively um i so most of our originals like I had the idea of them like before what I wanted to like convey basically and I like was not very good with harmony or theory really and like I like it's really important but I kind of dipped out of that for some reason and I'm like very emotional and feeling based and like the boys know that as well they're very good with that and they take that into consideration so um, I basically had some ideas and I basically just tell the boys and describe how I'm feeling and how I want them to play. And um, I know like I have basic harmony and then Sam always comes in with like his massive jazz knowledge of harmony <laughs> and he just like makes them so much more better than I could have ever dreamed to be. And like the rhythm sections are so good, like always coming up with things that I like wanted, but I didn't know how to explain. And also coming up with new ideas that like completely changed the vibe of the song and um I just really appreciate their input like and they're so patient with me I'm like I want you to make me feel whiplash and then I want you to make me feel happy and then sad and then I want to feel really like uncomfortable right here and I want to feel really comfortable here like I just tell them what I want and they just like they see through all the craziness and like make it work which is magic but I don't know how you boys feel like being on the receiving end of that yeah no it's it's Calm. good to have. It's good to have someone who knows what they're after. It's better yeah. than you just being really quiet and being like, oh, I don't know. Like, it's, it's, there's been times where we've been working on something, and like we, us three have been playing something, and you, I remember you just kind of going, I don't really like this, <laughs> and then where we changed it, and then we ended up changing it to something way better, and it was like because of you kind of like guiding us and everything like that. I remember that was in Scarlet's Web. Yeah. Coming up. Yeah, and it's like Charlotte's a lot Web. of like. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's the sort of thing that certain chords can make you feel like certain ways, but not necessarily depending on like where you're putting them and what you're putting in behind them. Um, so to have someone like Asher who's on board and it has a very clear vision and there's very like lots of emotion and ideas behind it is is makes it easy to come in and just be like, right, sound, whack about something on there, and um, yeah, it's it's an enjoyable process. So that. That's good. <laughs> we but, don't tell this to each other enough, I don't <laughs> think, so it's nice to say it out loud. Yeah. Um, well, actually, going on further on to that, so do you play any instruments yourself or are you solely a lyricist and, and vocalist? Um, I taught myself keys in school. Like, I know how to play keys. I know my way around it. But, like, I wouldn't say I would ever be brave enough to, like, perform it. I was, like, in a tribute 80s <coughs> band at one point, And I did a bit of, like, synth work, um, which is, like, a lot different, I feel like, because it's more, like, melody patterns and stuff like that um, than, like, holding massive chords and stuff. So I don't think I'd ever be brave enough to play another instrument in Marmalade's Guides because mm -hmm. I don't think I'm that good of, like, a musician compared to these guys like when it comes to instruments but um I do play keys and that's where like the like harmony starts when I start to think about ideas and stuff yeah so do you start off with the lyrics and then and then start to try to think how this can be sort of done musically or I always start with like the like structure harmony of mm -hmm. the song mm -hmm. how I want like how I want to feel with the sonic components and then I start with melody to help like 
convey that even more and then once I've got the most of the I think of it like a house once I get most of the house sorted I can then like add the final piece because I do really appreciate like harmony when it comes to like conveying a story I don't think like I just feel like for me that's really important and then adding the lyrics just helps convey like what I want and that's like sometimes difficult for me because it's more of a therapy thing so like I do it and sometimes it can be really hard to like open things up that I don't want to but it's all part of the process I guess Mm -hmm. definitely well who are your biggest inspirations I personally I like for me as a like a vocalist and how I write like songs I love Amy Winehouse she was amazing I loved like her early jazzy stuff when she also when she used to like take standards and make them into like her own originals as well and use the theory behind that um I really like her and I think Ben will probably have some good um really influences yeah (laughs) definitely or anyone else uh I don't know, on, on, a, on a personal level, I, I grew up listening to like, the Beatles and Radiohead and maybe that's where like, some of the psych rock kind of elements come in from, maybe. Um, but I don't know, because I'm not really a songwriter myself. I don't know, like the Beatles don't influence how I write a song, because I don't sit down and write songs by myself. I only do it with, with these guys and have my own input. But yeah, I don't know. I can't really think of any drumming influences either, to be honest. What about you, Sam or Luke? I've got so many, like, I just listen to it so much. Like, grew up, like, especially through, like, like the last sort of five years, sort of, like, Audio Slave and Soundgarden. Um, and then sort of got interested in jazz, sort of listening to people like Julian Lage and Jim Hall and just all the sort of greats, I guess, and, like Coltrane, Davis. Um, and then I also just love the Soul Quarian stuff, like D'Angelo, Eric Badu, all of those albums. Uh, big rap guy like Loyal Connors <sighs> stunning um, but like yeah just like a bit of everything even like classical from a harmony point of view mm-hmm. um, especially in stuff like this looking at voices that come from like places like uh, some of Debussy stuff um, like just all sorts just getting involved with everything and taking a bit um, and just chilling so yeah I like like you said Erica mm. Badu like also is like a massive influence and also WC like I love his work as well and I remember growing up like learning about music theory through a classical lens and learning about like composers and in school you kind of get taught that like especially if you're on like a classical course like you get taught that that's the only like I feel like there's a boundary there and then like you forget that there's other influences you can have as well especially in education I think yeah what about you Luke uh like in terms of an individual bass player like uh Eden Nielsen who played with Prince for a bit actually for quite a while um she's really cool but um yeah I don't know I kind of I grew up listening to heavier stuff as well so which is a bit contrasting to this like Queens of the Stone Age and stuff like that but um yeah, I don't know. Oh, actually, who had, I know there's like a million people that did. Whoever played on Mac Miller's albums, whoever played bass on those. I know there's like, Thundercat has done some stuff for him, but whoever did it, they're insane. So, Mac nice. Miller's stuff. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's this next song you're going to play? Could you tell me a little bit about it and where it formed? So, this song is Pennies, and I wrote this about... Um, Lyrically, well, the story is about how sometimes in relationships you can be so confused with actually what's going on and, like, your brain starts to play tricks on you and then, like, the other person starts to play tricks on you and then you start playing tricks on them. And this is basically, like, my perspective of, like, being in a situation like that and how one moment you can think this is going to happen and then it completely changes. And it's also a little bit like a tiny bit uncomfortable the whole time but like obviously not the song is a tiny bit uncomfortable but that's how like the story's about basically so this is pennies
song is called Wendy. Sorry, I had to check the set list then. Yeah, it's upside down. We're sharing one today, so. <laughs>
leave it, leave it up for Wendy. 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 Leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Leave it, leave it up for Wendy. Leave it, leave it up for Wendy. This next song's called River. He's just getting his brushes out, doing a little stick change. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> right? Cool. You ready, boys? Uh. Sorted. <laughs> Marmalade Skies here at Lead Secret <laughs> Sessions. Um, I see you've brought a little bit of decoration with you today. Yes. Um, how important is uh, the visual aspect of being a musician to you? Like the whole idea of, of what it means to be Marmalade Skies? Um, I think I'm dyslexic, so I'm a very visual and sensory learner. So when I see stuff that like correlates to other senses it makes me feel happy <laughs> and um also I feel like um 
identity for people, especially nowadays, is so important to ev- people's mental health and their well-being. And for like <sighs> me and us to be who we truly are, like we need to have the performance element. We need to have the flowers and just to support like what we're trying to convey, I guess. We want to be marmalade skies with all the visuals i guess and i'm like a i'm a i'm a big performer i can't stand still i was in when i was in choir little girl like my singing teacher would always tell me off for like dancing when everyone had to be like straight and like (laughs) just like sing normally but i'd just be like dancing all the time so i've always just had ants in my pants i guess but i guess like you guys when when it comes to like the visuals and stuff we've we've always had (laughs) (laughs) i've before gigs was always a big like what are we gonna wear and i think yeah but like the bands i mean ash has got such a strong image and like the flowers and like the kind of the lights that we kind of choose it works so well that it's important for us to fit in with that Um, and i think when you go and see a band like you you want them to look like a band you're going to take them more seriously especially if they've done the little things that bring their own decoration and kind of okay these guys are thinking about that sort of stuff it's not just like we'll make music for the sake of it it's like let's put on a show let's do something proper yeah yeah definitely i mean i'm a i'm one a big one for having a certain identity for for the projects i've worked on personally and you see people like uh jack white who's one of my biggest inspirations but the way he uses color to differentiate each project so with the white stripes you've got red white and black and that's as you were saying it it really differentiates and makes people remember the artist yeah, well. um now i know you started as a five piece uh you're now a four piece uh with no keyboard and how have you had to adapt your performance to accommodate that um it was like a big loss i guess like personally um downsizing I guess we could call it downsizing um but I think musically we're like we're really we're getting on with it and we really we just we work pretty well together and oh. yeah we, we, we spent a lot of time particularly with Sam but in the in Wendy that we just played like there's times where Luke now plays bass chords to kind of fill it out yeah Sam's put effects on his pedals to almost mimic a keyboard yeah. so we've, we've definitely had to think about how we're going to do it now that we don't have a keyboard player yeah and confidence as well because we had like we had a gig not long ago which was the first one without keys and we had a rehearsal before it actually we had two rehearsals and the first one we were like really unsure and it was all kind of like don't know if we'll do this and then i don't know i think it was was just confidence and volume i think Mm -hmm. and just going for it yeah and it it turns out pretty good so yeah therefore in terms of like because it sort of leaves me as the only like harmony instrument with like ability for cordage apart well look cordage cordage <laughs> cordage <laughs> I can't believe that slipping cordage <laughs> um, but, like, <laughs> um, but in terms of like we have changed a couple of tunes just to sort of accommodate that and um, it sort of opens it opens and closes certain doors in terms of what you can do um, but for us at the moment it seems to be working really really well so yeah um, Definitely. Absolutely, yeah. Um, describe yourselves in three words. Marmalade Skies. Yes. Yeah, oh, yeah no, obviously, sorry. Scottish. Uh, no, um, oh my gosh, what three words. What language are we allowed to use? Should we do, yeah, what language should we use? Um, Whatever language you want. Really, really fucking cool, that's four, never mind. I'm going to not speak, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to not speak for the rest of this, but you. <laughs> um, you give a word first, Sam. Put you on the spot. Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oof. I'd say colourful. Yeah? Yeah, we'll go with that. Image yeah. wise, colourful, bright. And harmony wise. Yeah. I guess we're very yeah. colourful. Very colourful. Yeah. So colourful. Um, friends. We're all friends. We get on really well, which is nice. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and colourful. I think friends. quite different. I think, yeah. it's, I think it's quite Go different. For it. Let's be them people. We're unique. <laughs> colourful friends, unique. <laughs> unique, colourful so friends. Yeah, <laughs> that's order. so much <laughs> See, you should be asking the question. <laughs> um, yeah, so colourful friends, unique, or the other way around. Other way around, yeah. yeah sounds better. <laughs> um, what's next for you guys? Next is... We're hopefully getting in the studio soon mm. and releasing so we can... Um, 
have people listen to our music whenever they want instead of just going to gigs, which is nice. And also, like, the one thing that I said when I came to uni is like, I just want to release my music just so, like, I can have it out there and it, there's a place for it and there's also a context for it as well because I, although, like, the songs are brilliant performed live and I love performing, like, I feel like I'd love someone to listen to my song as, like, a moment in their life, like a moment in their life that they can remember because that's what I use music for a lot to like map out my journey, I guess. And maybe if someone did that for me, that would be really cool. And like us, I think that'd be really nice. Yeah, I think we've got like, I think we're starting to develop the live aspect as well. Like I think we're putting together a bit more of like a live show, like mm. stage decor and I don't know, with like BVs. Yeah, <laughs> BVs, horns, potentially. Yeah, cool and stuff. Yeah, we might be growing a little bit. Yeah, but hey. cannot be confirmed yet. <laughs> but yeah, live appearance is going to be a bit more of like a a, fo- a focus point, I think. Yeah. Well, Definitely. we'll make sure to uh, look out for more Marmalade Skies in the future and some potential releases. Uh, what's this last song going to play for us? It's called Charlotte's Web. Um, I wrote this about uh, <laughs> I wrote this about a little green friend that a lot of us in the band um, have like a somewhat strenuous relationship with. I guess I think that's how we could put it. I'll do. Yeah, that would do. <laughs> I mean, worry. you can you can I'll fill do. in the gaps and um, figure out what we're actually talking about. But I'm not sure if I should say it on record. <laughs> but um, this is Charlotte's Web. I'm thinking of someone else's mind. 
I've got to fill the time. I'm, I'm thinking with someone else's mind. I'm wrapped up in a web and I can't leave her behind because I'm, I'm thinking with someone else's mind. Please help me. I'm thinking with someone else's mind. I can't see the lies behind her green eyes because I'm thinking with someone else's mind. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking with someone else's mind. I'm thinking with someone else's mind. Maybe she's fine. I'm, I'm thinking with someone else's mind. Please help me. I'm thinking with someone else's mind. I try to feel the lungs and the choking feeling of the smoke. I feel the smoke fill my lungs and I can't evoke how I feel. I'm thinking with someone else's mind. I can't see behind the lines. I'm trying to make the line. I'm thinking with someone else's mind. I'm happy to stay content here, but I'm thinking with someone else's mind. I'm happy to stay content here, but I'm thinking with someone else's mind. I'm trying to stop the line. I'm trying to stop the line, but I'm thinking I'm with someone else's mind. And I'm changing, I'm gone. Thank you guys. <laughs>